Hey guys, welcome back. As always, my name is Lazar, and today we're going to be spending a little bit of time talking about mastery ranks in Warframe, because I believe this topic is still a little bit hazy to a lot of players, and it can stand some improvements here and there. So let's begin with what mastery ranks actually are. When I started out in Warframe, for me, coming from a MOBA and MMO, I was a MOBA slash MMO player, I thought that mastery ranks were basically MMO levels. Okay, I gotta get my rank up so I can be more powerful and yay, win at the game. Which is not entirely true in Warframe. You see, power in Warframe and mastery rank don't necessarily go hand in hand. Warframe as a game is more about knowledge and accumulation if you really want to be a quote-unquote strong player. Though, bear in mind, this not being a competitive game per se, there's nothing really to win. You just get to feel even more as a badass. And Warframe does do a pretty good job of making you feel like a badass. Except at the start when you die all the time and you're the last guy at Extract and you may feel horrible, please do not feel horrible. Nobody's judging you, trust me. We love new players in Warframe. And most veterans do try to seek and help. Now, Every mastery rank you get a couple of standard rewards. For example, every mastery rank uh, up you get an extra 500 syndicate standing cap. And you get another 50 void traces standing cap. And you get 5000 more uh, focus standing cap. And you can spawn higher level enemies in the simulacrum. Now, these are just a couple of examples. Your weapons also start off with a slightly higher mod capacity up until level 30. I've actually even past level 30, believe it or not. Legendary rank players, so 30 and up, can actually get their uh, weapons that would normally have maximum mod capacity of 60 to go over that. So let's say an MR31 player installs an Orkin Catalyst and it goes to 62 with that according to the wiki. So bear that one in mind. How do you actually rank up and how you get mastery points and what's the best way to level stuff so I can grow in mastery really quick? Which I don't really recommend because you're kind of like short-circuiting your whole experience with Warframe. If you really want to know that, I got a nifty guide link in the cards right now. Double snap. Triple snap. That wasn't a good snap. Four snaps. That was a good snap. The fourth snap did it. Now, you get a whole lot more when it comes to being a new player when you go from mastery rank to mastery rank. And the actual tests are pretty easy. There's plenty of guides on YouTube in case you think you might not be able to do them. I would recommend practicing every time at least once because if not, you're going to be getting yourself a 24-hour lockout. And as a new player, I remember missing one. I was like so sad about it. Oh, damn it. I need to wait a day and I want to use this weapon because that's another thing about mastery ranks perhaps what was the most important to me after i realized it's not like an mmo level you basically unlock the ability to use more stuff different warframes prime warframes very powerful weapons but my friends by mr16 you can use everything in the game all the warframes all the weapons riven mods essentially everything so past that point you don't really get access to newfound power even though some of the most powerful Weapons and Warframes in Warframe don't even need that high of a mastery lockout to use. If you guys are curious, if you're a new player in Warframe and you want a solid weapon to basically destroy everything, link in the cards right now for the mighty Ignis Wraith. Let's take a trip down memory lane and imagine an MR0 player, we won't give any name, starting off in Warframe. The daily maximum syndicate standing is 16,000 at MR0. And you get yourself also a maximum accumulation cap of void traces of 100. That's it. Well, it's true. You also get 250,000 focus. But honestly, you're going to learn about focus really later on. From that point onwards, you're going to be getting yourself a lot of important unlocks for the first mastery ranks. And by the first, I mean first 10-ish. For example, at MR1, you unlock Maru's Bazaar. And for a newer player coming into Warframe, Maru's Bazaar is definitely important. Unless, of course, you want to get out your credit card. You also unlock uh, bounties levels 10 through 30. At level 2, even more importantly, in an integral part of Warframe, you unlock trading. Now, of course, the number of actual trades you get will be increasing with your mastery rank. You don't get a whole lot of trades initially. And I like to believe that a lot of new players in Warframe get a whole lot of stuff for free from their theoretical friends, like mods they didn't have, etc, etc. Maybe a little bit of plat to start them off. You do get a little bit of plat as a new player, but trust me, you want to use that plat for slots for your Warframes and your weapons, nothing else. You also get access to level 20 and 40 bounties and at MR3 you finally unlock syndicates and you can actually put that cap to good use. You also unlock the Nata and the second dream quest. 
Of course, this is on top of everything else, the whole uh, extra void traces and uh, syndicate standing capacity. At MR4, my friends, you unlock the Deadlock Protocol quest, which was not horrible, which is definitely a good thing. At MR5, you get to, <laughs> to have fun with Counselor Vey Heck, Bounties, level 40 to 60s, and of course, Sansa Vinaros and the War Within quest. Now, my friends, the Sansa Vinaros quest is fantastic. I highly recommend it, especially if you're finding yourself, you're dying all the time as a new player. This is the only thing that really made me feel bad as a new player. I was dying all the time, and I was the last guy I'd extract, and it made me feel terrible. Outside of the fact that everybody looked like they're freaking Michael Jackson and I was like like the poor beggar on the street. But that's not important. Don't worry about it. You'll grow in mastery and you will too become the guy. At MR7, you unlock the Silver Grove, a very interesting quest. Again, most quests in Warframe are actually quite nice and I do recommend you take your time with them and not rush the experience. Just like I recommend you don't rush through these mastery ranks, okay? Because at the other side, it, there's really nothing. MR8 is very important. Unlocks all faction syndicate melee weapons, unlock access to all the relays, minimum rank required to use uh, at the trade Riven mods. Now, from MR8 you can use Rivens, that's the minimum rank, but they go up all the way to mastery rank 16. Allow purchasing of helmet segment from Sun, giving access to helmet's ability to subsume Warframes. Ah, you get access to the helmet. Now that changes the ball game for Warframe completely because now you can use some Warframe abilities on other Warframes making fantastic combinations. Honestly, the helmet system really revitalized Warframe build, so huge thumbs up for that. Now I'm gonna leave a link in the description down below for all the major unlockables so you can have a look at them for yourself. You see, up until MR10, and at MR10, you basically unlock, with Steel Path unlocked, the ability to launch the Steel Path bounties are open world missions. This is very important if you're looking for higher level enemies in an actual gameplay scenario past the simulacrum. But between MR10 and about MR30, there's a big gap of really nothing. That's a big bit of an issue because the game starts you off with like, hey, have this, have this, hey, you're MR free, have this, fantastic. And then there's this like pitfall of nothing, nothingness. Granted, you still get the same generic rewards, but honestly, at a certain point, they don't feel satisfying anymore. I like to believe D felt this and came with us at MR30 and given us a whole lot of stuff. My friends, when you reach MR30, you get free Umbral formats, you get 15 loadout slots, 30 Riven mod slots, you get two things which I really want, the only two things I care about, the True Master emote, you get to do this cool pose and all whatnot, and this little Mercedes-like ornament that you get to put on your orbiter just to show off that you're so tough and all whatnot. Another important thing that you can do at MR30 and above is go to any relay and apply blessings to everybody, which is huge. You can give them 20% affinity or credits or resource drop chance. <laughs> Resource drop chance. Base damage, health, and shield. That is huge. Honestly, they did a fantastic, a phenomenal job at MR30. Past that, you get a legendary for every single rank. And did you know that if a player reaches a mastery rank that the developer didn't create a special test for, the game is going to automatically reuse the previous test? Did you guys know that? No, I, I read it like 15 minutes ago on the wiki. I didn't know either. And that's... The long and short, a very simplified version, if you will, when it comes to mastery ranks in Warframe. They are definitely important. My goal is for you to understand that these are not like MMO levels, like I believed. And I see a whole lot of players like rush through these things. Oh, I gotta get to max, I gotta get to max. Why? It really has very little to do with power past mastery rank 16. The prestige of it? I don't know. I don't know, because again, if you really want to see what a player is capable of, you got to check out their profile, you got to see what they did, what they didn't do, and so on. It's not really like, oh, that guy has tier 64.2 on him from Heroic and he's max rank. And it's, it's really not like that. One of the issues that I see with the mastery rank system is the one I pointed out earlier. Between mastery rank 10, 12, 16, maybe, let's go all the way to 16. And MR30, there's a huge gap of nothingness nothing special for us that's half the master almost half the mastery ranks in the game that you don't show us a little bit of love and attention you kind of leave us in limbo you see what I said? i'm sorry i'll stop now that's one issue with the mastery rank system 
Outside of that, honestly, it has been polished up pretty well over the years. I love the approach they took at Mastery Rank 30, even though as a player who has grinded sorties, and I've got Legendary Core from sorties with a super low drop chance, and I experienced the joy and happiness of actually getting one, finally. I'm not really the biggest fan of seeing Legendary Core just like handed out for free like that, but you know what, I can get over myself, so that's a non-issue. I would just like to see Mastery Ranks be a bit more exciting than they are especially for that drop off between mastery rank 12 all the way up to 30. Now the wiki states the following MR is a method of tracking how much of the game's total content a player has experienced and I highly disagree with this one. Warframe is not about mastery rank. Warframe is not about leveling as fast as you can to get to somewhere. There's no somewhere to get to, trust me, there's nothing on the other side. Warframe is about experiencing this fantastic and unique universe that the dev crafted. Take your time, enjoy it. Whether you do it solo, whether you do it with your friends, have fun in Warframe. Enjoy the unique gameplay, enjoy the unique universe and all the bits and pieces it has to offer. And I do believe, my friends, that's all I wanted to say today. Thank you guys so much for watching, like, favorite, share and subscribe if you enjoy the content and if you have any feedback for me, I would love to read it in the comment section down below. Until next time my friends, bye bye!